Thank you, Ted, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Fidelity, I want to congratulate again ACE on this wonderful milestone of celebrating your 100th meeting, and to also recognize the very important work of the Fellows Program at help really developing the next generation of leaders in higher education. A vital part of the Fellows Program is the many college and university presidents who volunteer their time to serve as mentors. So in my experience, when you see someone who is truly thriving in their career, and you ask them what's helped contribute to their success, the majority of them will share with you the role that a mentor has played or is continuing to play in their development. Mentors give honest feedback, are there to coach and support, they're there to listen, and they're there to inspire. And let's face it, everybody has a busy life these days. But what, what makes mentors really, I think, special is that despite their very busy lives, they've decided to take a little more time and invest it in the development of somebody else. That's one of the many reasons why we are so pleased to support the Mentors Program and the Fellows Program at large. So now to present this year's Mentor Award, please welcome Joseph Bertolino, Chair of the Council of Fellows Board and President of Southern Connecticut State University. Oh, I like that music too. Well, thank you, Deborah. A game changer, a singular visionary, a compassionate educator, a student-centered leader, a rock star. These are just a few of the words used by several mentees to describe this year's recipient of the Council of Fellows Fidelity Investments Mentor Award. Renu Couture, President of the University of Houston and Chancellor of the University of Houston System, is an authentic leader who takes the commitment of mentoring very seriously. Who doesn't know Renu Couture? Wearing signature red, usually, or her UH championship pendant, she has created a powerhouse university in Houston, served as chair of the ACE board, and is a national leader in higher education. I remember our first meeting as if it were yesterday. She asked me a simple question, one she asks all of her mentees. Why do you want to be a college president? I hesitated, expressing concern that as a student affairs professional and an openly gay man, my options would be limited. She proceeded to share her own inspirational story and her thoughts on glass ceilings. In the end, she challenged me to think differently and set my sights higher. As such, I was privileged in 2010-11 to serve as President Couture's first ACE Fellow. I had never before worn so much red in my life <laughs> as I did that year. I also learned about very important things like the rodeo, the heat in Houston, and most importantly, go Cougs. I still remember Reno. She allowed me, as she would her other mentees, to shadow her at every turn, ensuring that I was both in the room and at the table. She taught me the importance of fit and the importance of the three Ps, purpose, passion, and planning. When my time with her came to an end, she said quite simply and with confidence, you're ready. Now go out and be a good president. A year later, I would accept my first of two presidential appointments. Despite her demanding schedule, she has made a lifetime commitment to investing in her mentees long after they leave from under her tutelage. To quote one nominator, transparency is part of her mentoring method. She shares her triumphs and challenges, victories and defeats, as well as the highs and lows of higher education administration to educate, empower, encourage her mentees to meet and navigate the tumultuous waters of leadership. 
This past September, after Hurricane Harvey, Chancellor Couture sent the following email to her mentees. Emergencies teach us some of the most important lessons in management. Now I've seen two major hurricanes. Let me know if you would like to arrange for a conference call so that we can have a dialogue about how we manage to this crisis. My blogs may have given you some insight, but there is more that happened behind the scenes. She turned a crisis and its aftermath into a teachable moment for her mentees. She took the time to share her experiences and expertise with her current and former fellows, thus creating what became a master class in crisis management. She has, to quote another nominator, taught me a great deal about leading from one center, about navigating politics on multiple levels, about facilitating work-life balance, about communicating values to students, about protecting one's institution, framing issues, coalition building, patience and diligence, and about listening with intentionality. We are all better professionals and people because of her mentorship. So President Mitchell, Deborah, members of the ACE Council of Fellows, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this year's Council of Fellows Fidelity Investments Mentor Award, Renu Couture, President of the University of Houston and Chancellor of the University of Houston System. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Fidelity. Wow. I am honored. I am humbled. And I can say I was totally speechless when I got the word from Joe that I will be receiving this award. And once again, I am speechless. Because my eyes have been so focused on thanking those people, my mentors, who have been part of my journey, and I never thought that I would have or can make such an impact on anybody. So thank you so much. You know, sometimes it's very difficult to think about, reflect upon your journey. It just can't be explained. But I, in honor of my fellows, everybody here, Joe, Kenya, Bettina, David, and in honor of my former student who has joined here, Nita, who is now a professor at Georgetown University, and also in honor of my husband, who keeps proving every day, Suresh, who keeps proving every day that behind every successful woman is a secure man. I accept this award. I accept this award with great humility. Didn't, never thought I would stand here, but now that I'm standing here, I have three very simple messages to share with you. First of all, mentoring is extremely powerful because there's nothing else that can explain my journey. Journey of a girl from rural heartland of India whose horizons weren't even big enough to dream something like this. A girl who as a teenager was given away in arranged marriage, who landed up in this country not because she wanted to be, but because she was forced to, with a man who was complete a stranger without any functional knowledge of English. And yet, 18 months later, I was able to get my master's degree from Purdue University. 
Yes, I learned, had to learn English from I love Lucy. <laughs> Thank you with all due respect to English professors. <laughs> yes, it was hard work, but it is possible because of all those people who mentored me, who taught me, who believed in me, who did not let me fail, who said you can do it, and first among all of them was my husband. Mentoring is powerful, so make sure whether it's one person or many, whether it's formal or informal, whether it is one point in time, one turning point, or whether it's throughout your life, lean on, ask for help. Just ask questions, believe in people, be inspired, read all of those biographies and autobiographies who tell us how ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Mentoring is absolutely powerful. Second message, even though we can keep, and we can talk all the problems that higher education has, we can talk all the problems that America has, and that's what we will probably hear in every single session over here. America is still the land of opportunity. It still is the best place for dreams coming true. Again, how else it would have been possible Think about it. I have an accent. I'm a woman. I'm international. I came here with practically nothing. And yet, here I can stand before you today. Not possible in many places. So therefore, whatever the problems are, whatever the challenges are, let's adopt them. Let's embrace them. Let's make sure we can fix them. Whatever it takes, whether it's Nancy's approach, or whether it's anybody's, whatever it takes. Because we, we have a moral obligation. If we fail in that, then people like me would never stand here again. Message number three. You all are leaders. You have vision in your eyes. You have passion in your hearts. You have fire in your belly. Otherwise, you won't be where you are today. This is the conference of leaders. You all have influence, and you all have made it this far. So let's take the one final loop. Let's make sure you realize, we all realize, nobody ever travels their life's journey alone. There are many people who travel with us, who inspire us, who are with us, who have always been there with us. And therefore, it becomes our obligation to reach back and take the pledge to help out at least 10 other people realize their dreams, become leaders of tomorrow, because that's what our future demands. That's what higher ed will need. That's what our society will need. And you have the power to do that. So have the humility to, to, to take that pledge and to do that. Once again, I'm deeply honored. I thank my fellows, I thank Fidelity, I thank, thank ACE, and I do gratefully thank all those people who are many of you are in the room who continue to inspire me and advise me. Thank you very much.